My name is Bryn Olmschneider. Um, I am a graduate student here at UCSF and I work in the NASTA lab, which is here. Our research is very basic, which means that we are sort of trying to figure out at the ver a very fundamental level, like how life works and how life is organized. Long term, some of the research going on in the lab has implications to cancer, um, but my specific area of research is on stem cell biology and how adult stem cells work, basically. I grew up in uh, West Texas, and my family was pretty scientifically minded. Um, my dad was a geologist, and my mom was a biologist for a while, and then um, she kind of changed careers a little bit and became a science teacher. So like my experience is probably somewhat unique, but I think that my mom really did encourage like curiosity about the natural world. Like I mean, I was the kid who like collected bugs, collected rocks. Um, all sorts of things like that. It was like halfway through my sophomore year of college I started doing research in a lab and I think it was sort of like the realization that there's a lot that we don't know about the world and how it works especially when you like dive down into the details of like how cells talk to each other, how genes talk to each other um, and I think that was sort of like you know where and I decided that I wanted to do research. So how you choose a lab when you're a grad student is you spend your first year rotating through a couple of different labs, so you'll hang out in three different labs for about a couple of months in each lab, and, at the, and then at the end of that you'll pick one. Sciences are supposed to be like hyper-rational and like make decisions on logic and reason, but um, when I joined this lab it was really like a gut, like this feels right, I'm gonna go with it. Um, like, I decided that I was gonna join this lab like two days into my rotation. Um, because coming here and working here just felt like it was gonna be a good fit, and that has been true. So my research is um, focused more on what signals inside of the cell are important for um, the process of differentiation, which is the process by which a stem cell changes into different types of cells. And the specific area that I'm working on is something that no one has ever looked at before in stem cells, so it's pretty exciting. Um, I think it could have big implications for um, our understanding of like how stem cells function, which are kind of important. A typical day is this lab does a lot of microscopy, um, so we use microscopes to take pictures of the insides of flies, um, and I do a lot of in vivo imaging. In vivo means in live tissue. Um, so a lot of what I do involves taking a look at the stem cell population that we study um, underneath the microscope, um, and then doing a lot of calculations to figure out what the intercellular pH of our tissue is. So pH is like the acidity of a specific tissue, and you can measure that using a microscope and a fancy fluorescent reporter. So what you saw me doing in there was just to collect virgins, which are non-mated flies, um, that I'm going to use uh, to make fly strains that are carrying um, specific things that I want. To sum all of that up in sort of like one short bite is um, I basically like poke at flies and make them turn pretty colors and then figure out what the colors mean. The way that science is taught, especially when you're just starting out, is um, like to just memorize a bunch of facts about the world. Um, but the way the science is done is to sort of like figure out how all those pieces fit together and um, when you sort of get to the end of like what facts we know about the world, um, you're sort of like peering over the edge of this cliff and there's like a point where like the knowledge ends and like we have to go and find knowledge for yourself. I think it's focusing on the big picture, on um, like what I'm doing and what it means and where where it could go. Um, some of like the day-to-day -day parts of doing science are a lot of a lot of doing the same thing over and over and over again until you get results and it's when you actually get the results that you're like, yes, like I am doing something cool and that could be really exciting. So you have kind of have to keep focused on like the big picture of like where your experiments are going and what they could mean to stay excited about what you're doing.